All right, finally getting around back to this machine. Um, I got this a long time ago, and uh, I, ha I have a place for it on my shelf now. I have a new shelf, and I'll be able to keep this within arm's reach. So um, I want to get it up and running again. Seems like a nice thing to have. It is a voltage standard, 10-volt um, uh, range and a 100-millivolt uh, range. And it is made by the Electronic Development Corporation, EDC. Um, this is the model MV100. And it's kind of hard to find documents on this. I haven't found any documents actually on this. Um, there was one blog post of a fellow who did get one up and running. And uh, he... Uh, gave a lot of information on on his postings uh dave over at eev blog has a mv106 and the mv106 is basically the same machine but it adds one more range to it this one has a uh, uh only one millivolt range this has two millivolt ranges so i have 10 volts zero that's zero 10 volt range 100 millivolt range and his had a 10 millivolt range as well uh, the the 106, but internally they're basically the same, so that's that's good, and the calibration should be about the same. Um, so, uh, what I would just want to see is what should I do with it before I calibrate it? Uh, does it need any fixing? And uh, let's take a look inside. All right, so we have a completely exposed AC uh, power supply. So I have to be careful. There's AC there. There's AC here. So yeah, don't touch over that away. Um, if the AC comes into a uh, uh, bridge rectifier, you get plus or minus 15 volts, basically, that runs an op-amp. Um, op-amp was a big giant thing back in the day. So this thing dates to 1975, so it does have some vintage to it. So, yeah, 1975. So this is a chopper-stabilized amplifier, so you can get those on a chip now. But, um, yeah, chopper-stabilized amplifier. And then... Um, it needs a perfect reference, right? This is a calibration uh, reference. So I don't know if you can see right down there's a the little orange thing. That is a Zener diode. And that Zener diode was calibrated or characterized, I should say, at the factory. And so there's some writing down here of um, where does that diode, where is it the most stable? So I did a series on Zener diodes, but I could have gone a long time on Zener diodes because this is even more information. So Zener diodes have a temperature coefficient and you can generate circuits around them to minimize that temperature variation, or you can get the perfect Zener diode. So you can get a Zener diode that's kind of flat with, uh, flat with temperature and you need to characterize them. So this one was characterized. So at 6.3252 volts, that Zener diode has a zero temperature coefficient. Okay, that was done at the factory. Uh, can I zoom in? I can zoom in a little bit there so you can read that. Um, so uh, it's run by a constant current source, which is over here. This is, this is the constant current source. You adjust this potentiometer so that the current running through the part, about seven milliamps, it's on the tag there, about seven milliamps, you get this condition where the thing is temperature stable. All right, and then there's a couple other pots here. These are two zeroing pots. This is a volt pot and the millivolt pot. So the main calibration is done on this board here, and then the front panel is a whole bunch of dividers, okay? So one thing that I have noticed so far is that the diode is not running at the right, at the right um, voltage. Let me uh, go ahead and, let's go ahead and measure that just so I can, you, you can be on the same page as me. I'm gonna put a, uh, uh, so this is supposed to be 6.325. We are at 6.330, so yeah, so it's, it's maladjusted. Um, and I don't quite understand why. Um, and then it dawned on me, ah, there's a clue. So, then I wanted to learn what these five potentiometers do. I had to find the documents and stuff for this thing. Um, 
there is, like I said, there's a uh, an offset null. This potentiometer sets the offset null for the uh, amplifier. So it has a, a, an offset bias null. That's what this one does. And then there's another uh, uh, op amp that does a ground reference as, uh, and it, it's for the, it's for the remote sense. And it, anyway, you, you do zero with this one, then you also do a zero with this one. Okay. And they have a little mark over here that says zero for this potentiometer. Now this one does adjust volts and this one does adjust millivolts. Those are okay. But that zero is incorrect. That's the wrong potentiometer to adjust for zero. It's this one over here. So they must not have had the correct documentation or they were confused. It is confusing with the documentation, but I now know that, yeah, this is the one that sets this voltage. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to erase that little sign there and readjust that one to the correct voltage. And um, while I'm in here, I might replace some of these capacitors. These are 1975 capacitors. So I think I'll replace these capacitors. There's these three and these two. These are, these regulate it down to about 25 volts. And then these regulate, re regulate it down to about um, 15 volts and make it real quiet. It needs to be noise free. And maybe this one here too. So maybe these three, these two, and that one, and then it'll be good to go. There is a uh, optocoupler, an oh, <laughs> optocoupler, one of those weird uh, light bulb and, and uh, um, photoresistor type of things there. So that keeps noise out of the system as well. So yeah, I think I'll be doing that before I do much adjusting. And it's freezing cold in the garage tonight, so I'm not going to do it tonight. It'll be maladjusted. Uh, let me let me um, spin it around and show you the other part of the circuit. All right, there you go. This is the back of the front panel. And you can see there's a whole bunch of switches, uh, or these rotary switches to set the numbers. And um, these are 0.005% resistors, so very expensive resistors in here. So uh, this decade, that one, that one, that one, and that one are all set just by buying expensive resistors. And then the most significant digit is this one here, and it has a potentiometer on each click of the wheel up here. Um, and so those are calibrated separately. So the way that you calibrate this thing is you first calibrate the fixed one volt here, and then you um, calibrate these to it. They go up to 10 volts. You, 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 you set one volt and then you mirror this up, multiply it up with this, uh, with this here. So the, this, this series of resistors is in a feedback path. All right. So that's the way that works. Um, and everything looks pretty good. I used a deoxid on all of the switches. There's big warning signs in the um, manuals that you need to make sure you don't clean these things too much because they're all silver plated. Everything here is silver plated and they don't want you to wear through that silver plate. And you have to use the lubricant. Um, the uh, uh, MG Chemicals has two different types of contact cleaner, one that doesn't have a lubricant and one that does have a lubricant. And I happen to have the one that has the lubricant, so I, I should be good to go. Um, yeah, so I think what I will do, it's Sunday, what I think I'll do on Monday is uh, look in my bins to see if I have all the capacitors that I need already. And if I don't, I'll run the store and buy some. And then uh, when it warms up in the middle of the day, I will uh, go ahead and see if I can uh, adjust some of these things. Um, it's not going to be a perfect adjustment because it's right at the limit of my six and a half digit voltmeter. And uh, I do have two six and a half digit voltmeters. They do agree within a millivolt of each other. So it's going to be close enough for the garage work. Um, be nice if I had a seven and a half digit voltmeter for this, but I don't. And uh, so I will be adjusting these to those meters and uh, just know it. Um, these things aren't perfectly accurate. In fact, the lowest two digits are a little bit iffy. Um, I think this has a 30 ppm accuracy. And uh, 30 ppm is about the number 30 right here. <laughs> so 
uh, using these two is more of a relative thing than an absolute thing. Um, like I said, uh, Dave over in EEV Block did a really good uh, video on these things. He actually took it to a cow lab and had had his checked out, and it was certainly within the uh, accuracy specs of the data sheet for his. But like I said, mine's been maladjusted, and I think I know why it was maladjusted. The guy had a uh, wrong idea about one of the potentiometers. So, yeah, should be fun to work on.